Hello and welcome to Winds of Change part 15, Architect of Corruption. As always, builds can be found down below in the description. Um, for this quest you're meant to fight your way through Napui Quarter and eventually make your way to a, um, well, a boss encounter. Uh, it's a fairly lengthy quest. I did not speed this one up. Um, guessing that means there will be some, some boring stuff to cover. Um, definitely let me know how you feel about the video editing in other videos that I've done. So far I've not received any feedback. I don't know if it's if that's something you enjoyed or not. Um, essentially I'm trying to make these videos a bit more concise, so I'm, I'm cutting out and speeding up a lot of footage. Um, I guess take this one as a point of comparison where I won't be doing very much editing at all. And just let me know, do you want to see every single fight um, in in real time like this? The only thing I'll ever cut out is um, tracking back. So if I die and have to restart somewhere, um, yeah, I'll, I'll move the map around a bit. I kind of forgot where I wanted it. Incidentally, you don't need to fight this group. I had the map of the quest up on the wiki and I got confused as to where I was, so I thought I have to go through these. Uh, you, you actually don't, you can ignore these. Um, obviously, if you can de deal with one of these groups, you can do with um, all of them. But yeah, that's not much point, I guess. So I guess some general points, because I never really brought up why I did those things, or I never explained it. Um, I wanted to do a gener general sort of advice video about my my team setup and all that, but I recorded it. It ended up being 30 minutes and incredibly boring, so I decided to scrap it. Um, it. It was not a good watch. And that's coming from me who uploads things that are definitely not good watches in the first place. Um, anyway, so my team builds, as always, can be found in the description, so if you want to know a particular build or setup, um, you can find it there. Now, it is noticeable that both of my ritualists are carrying spears and shields. Um, the reason for that is that unlike my um, my Mesmers and Necros, they don't really profit much from having um, a 4040 set equipped. Especially the protection ritualist doesn't actually use spells, really. It's it's mostly binding rituals and um, soul twisting is a skill. So. 4040 sets don't benefit those, meaning there's not much point in, in using them. And um, the the advantage of using a spear is that they stand at a different range from my other characters. Unfortunately, it means they're standing closer, which can sometimes cause issues, but usually it's fine um, because enemy targeting is not is mo not mostly based on proximity. Um, it, it is a factor, but not a major one, so it doesn't mean that just because they're standing closer to the enemy they'll end up getting more um, more aggro. In fact, um, because they have shields equipped, so they take less damage um, and have more armor and armor reduction and all that, they're, as you can see from the description, I guess, um, they're sort of defensive spear sets, um, they will end up taking less aggro, which means that my Soul Twisting Ritualist is less likely to be hit by stuff, and also less likely to be hit in the AoE as someone's targeting him. So someone's targeting him um, becomes less likely, and that also means that the spirits standing right around him are less likely to be hit by AoEs. It still happens, the spirits themselves are still targets, so they will still be attacked on occasion. It's just somewhat less likely because he's um, he's got more defense, and he's not going to stand, again, usually, not going to stand right next to a Mesmer or a Necro. So it's just... The enemy AI doesn't consider them as nice a target. And that means um, my my most powerful defensive character, the Soul Twisting Ritualist, is just slightly more likely to survive longer, I guess. And yeah, you can see I've now actually changed the build, so I no longer have minions, and um, I have armor off on feeling on Xandra. I spoke about that in, um, I think, an earlier video, two videos ago, when I hadn't actually changed them yet. It's just I record these in bulk, so I wasn't sh I, I had forgotten when I made the change. Um, this, by the way, is the first really rough section of the quest. You, you'll actually see me die here. 
Um, problem is there's two groups up there which are very very difficult to split. I'm pretty sure it's possible. I think I did it when I did this on my Mesmer, but I'm not 100%. Um, but the problem is that as you lure them down, which I guess is a very good plan, I, I would advise doing this because it makes the enemies ball up nicely so uh, all your AoEs are more effective. Um, you can, if you're unlucky, also pull a third group, the one um, currently to my right, as you can see on the compass there, just above me there. Um, so two groups at the same t at, at a time can still be manageable. Um, it It's rough, these enemies aren't that weak, but it, it can be done, I guess. Um, it, it just becomes troublesome when the third group, which you'll see in just a moment, um, also joins in the fight, because, yeah, you, you can get overwhelmed. Now, I'm not sure if I would have made it without that. Um, two groups are still a bit rough, and I wasn't really calling that well here. But, um, yeah, the point remains. And it, it, it should be said that, um, for my party, I rely on Flesh of My Flesh as a resurrection skill. I like it because it's very quick to cast, especially on the Mesmers. Um, it, it has the downside, of course, of being a fairly sort of high-risk thing, where you, um, where you lose half your health for the resurrection, and you also resurrect with very low mana, or energy, rather. So, um, it, it's possibly not the best dress. And yeah, I just cut out the death here. Um, this time the group from the top was actually the first one I pulled uh, by just going into range of the melee characters there and uh, just pulling them. And then the rest of the casters followed me without pulling any of the other groups. So that worked out nicely. But yeah, aside from that, um, not really... Um, not really a particularly fun spot, I guess. Uh, you, you just can get overrun here quite easily. Um, and yeah, I was talking about resurrection skills. Now, um, I guess on, on the Mesmers, you could also use a Monk resurrection skill. There are a few others that are kind of nice. And because of fast casting, they are a little faster to cast. <laughs> um, so... That could be an alternative. There's also Death Pact Signet, which restores um, without losing health yourself and gives a lot more energy. The downside of that is that, of course, if the um, <sighs> if another death occurs, then the, the guy who resurrected also dies. Or maybe the other way around? I'm not sure. Anyway, um, it means that if you're resing in fight and you're still in trouble, and suddenly your trouble might double. I am not feeling very punny today, somehow. Um, so I just I just don't like the high risk of using Death Pact Signet, but I know a lot of other players like it on, on Ritualists. Um, I guess run whichever reses you like. Um, flesh of my flesh, I mostly like it if, if only one or maybe two party members die, because it's quite quick to cast, it's, it's kind of convenient. And the downside doesn't seem to matter much, or doesn't end up mattering much as long as your party is still mostly alive. But if you're like deep in trouble and half your party is dead, then uh, it's no longer such a good idea to use Flesh of My Flesh. So I guess you could use, I don't know, Chant of Resurrections, kind of nice on, uh, on a monk, um, which obviously you'd have to make the Mesmer Ritualists into Mesmer Monks, but that could be done. Um, and both of the writs are also monk secondary already, so you have a wide wide uh, variety of resurrection skills you could use there. Um, switch them up if you like. Um, I, I made some notes about what I wanted to cover. I lost those notes. Oh well. Um, so yeah, spears. Um, oh yeah, final point. I, I don't use it much, but I have Mark of Pain on, on my bar. And obviously my casters all have wands, so they don't trigger it, but the... Um, the Ritualists actually do, because their spears do physical damage. It's mostly supposed to be triggered by the Evan Vanguard Assassin. I don't end up using it much, because on clumped up enemies, it's not very reliable which one of them will get attacked by the uh, Assassin support. The point is that if you cast uh, Evas on a target, then you will summon the Assassin support, he will teleport into the target. It's actual teleportation, not just a Shadow Step. But um, he won't. Uh, he won't necessarily attack the target. 
he might attack something that's standing close to it. So in this case, there's a major mesmer and the ritualist standing close to each other. It's not guaranteed that my um, my assassin support will attack the target I actually cast it on. It's possible, of course, but it's not guaranteed. So I, I can't know in advance which target would actually be the best for the Mark of Pain. I don't end up using it much. I guess I could use something else, but there isn't really anything super useful that makes that much sense um, sense to bring. Um, and yeah, as I've explained earlier, because of the nature of the enemies has changed now, we're now fighting humans, and more to the point, we're fighting elementalists on occasion, which have full range AoEs. Um, I've switched away from using minions. Um, they, they, they would still be useful sometimes, but you can just get unlucky. You could enter a fight with a group, and your minions run up to someone, and then the enemy casts, for example, Sandstorm into the bunch of minions. And there will be, say, eight minions standing in the Sandstorm, and every tick of Sandstorm will trigger, um, will trigger Shelter, because the minions don't have that much health, so the Sandstorm damage is enough to actually trigger the effect of Shelter, which means the minions live longer, but they also kill shelter very, very quickly. If there's eight minions in the sandstorm, that's eight ticks of shelter damage. It deals to itself every second, so it, it doesn't live long. And, um, yeah, in sort of normal situations where there's not super much AoE, you would be fine because the minions will actually be protected by shelter, so they'll be alive longer, which means they will form a minion wall for longer, so their protection becomes more effective. But if the um, if the enemies do too much AoE, then it won't matter. The minions will still be dead, but the shelter will also be dead. So instead, um, you just want shelter to live longer, which is why you, you stop using minions. Um, it's still personal preference. I like minions because they offer nice protection, but um, in, in these settings here, um, they're not ideal. So, yeah, um, I guess scroll down below to find Livia's new build. Um, change it to whatever you like, really. Um, it, it's no longer essential. Um, the minions used to be a fairly important part of the build. Now that I've dropped them, um, it really doesn't matter much what you replace them with. I guess you could even drop the um, the monk skills, the protection spells, skills, uh, spells or skills. Wow. And... Um, Either move them elsewhere, or um, just drop them entirely. Shelter is still plenty of defense. And yeah, PI is a good skill against the elementalists, but be aware that the enemies will be removing hexes. So it's not not the completely super skill that it is in other parts of um, PvE, where enemies don't tend to remove hexes that much. In Winds of Change, there's a bunch of hex removals, so. Yeah, be, be aware of that. PI might not actually trigger just because you've cast it. Um, enemies do remove those hexes fairly quickly. And something which I'm not very good at, which I keep forgetting, is it. you should always call targets. Um, now, calling targets well, choosing good targets to prioritize is obviously ideal. But even if you're very bad at it and you're just randomly calling targets, that was still preferable over not calling at all. Almost every time. There might be strange, weird cases where actually not calling would have saved you. But I would advise uh, always call a target. Obviously try to make out which of the enemies are the most uh, troublesome and, and deal with those first. Call them. But if that doesn't end up working out, I guess you could just call whatever's closest to you. Just call something so your, your heroes focus on one target as much as possible and you um, you have less enemies to deal with because once they're dead, they no longer damage you. So uh, that's um, that's kind of an important thing to take away. I'm just trying to fill this video now with the generic stuff I wanted to say in that that general introduction video, which again it, it just it, it really really wasn't interesting or uh, worth watching. I just went over all the equipment and skill choices, which really isn't that interesting. Um. Yeah, I guess varieties. If you have, um, if you have um, mercenary heroes, 
that means you're not limited by which heroes the game offers you. So, for example, for me, I cannot have more than two Mesmers and two Ritualists at this point. Um, if I finish Winds of Change, I will get a third Ritualist, and I could change Raza to a Mesmer if I liked, because Raza has a sort of changeable first class. But the um, point is I don't right now. So I don't have more than two Mesmers or more than two Ritualists. If you have, if you have um, Mercenary Heroes, then instead of bringing Livia, who's now kind of just a filler, because there really isn't much else that's useful to bring, um, you could bring a third Mesmer, for example. And a third Mesmer could bring either another copy of Ineptitude or um, E-Search, or I guess if you're really desperate, another copy of Panic for some quests even. Um, point is, a second Ineptitude is not as silly as it sounds. Um, more than two would be pointless, but a second one still adds a ton of damage on top of um, the first one. Especially combined with Panic and all the Interrupt, making enemies cast less and auto-attack more. Um, multiple copies of Ineptitude, well I guess up to two copies, are not super bad. It, they don't they don't start really hurting each other's damage output until you hit three or, four, three or more. So it's like I guess a little like Discord spikers back in the old days. Some um, three Discord heroes, fine. Four would still be useful. Once you hit five or six, it starts becoming a little less useful because uh, it ends up not not paying off really. I oh, yeah, yeah, maybe be a little more careful than I and uh, don't stand in all the AOEs. I'm I'm finding a group down there, so they they um, their martial characters can't reach me, but neither can mine reach them. Which isn't so important because I don't really have that many of them. But still, don't don't stand in all the AoEs at once, that's a bit silly. Yeah, aside from that, it's really just uh Um yeah, just a matter of running to the boss and killing it. Um it, it it's not the most interesting of quests, but uh -huh. Yeah, I just I wasn't sure if people were okay with me cutting out stuff or speeding up stuff. So I'm guessing I guess take this for a comparison. Do you prefer this or prefer what will be happening two videos from now where it'll be massively cut down from the original uh, video link? I guess uh, yeah, let me know. Um I also don't think you have to go this route. This is obviously the um, the map of the Napi Quarter mission that we're currently moving through here. It's also the explorable map, yes, but this part in particular you might know is at least from from the way I choose is always the one you go through first when you do the mission. Um But yeah, you could probably go another way. Um as you saw right here I triggered the dialogues already. Um, that's because there's fairly lengthy dialogue coming up, and so I might as well trigger it and then fight these enemies down there. It, it obviously doesn't really matter. Um, so yeah, we're, we're almost done now. I guess I filled this video somewhat with relevant information. Um, I know people had been wondering about why I used a spear, or rather at least one person I know of had been wondering why I used spears on the Ritualist, so I guess maybe in case anyone else was having issues with that. That's my explanation. And yeah, there's a bunch of Amfa here, um, but you'll also be supported by a bunch of Ministry of Purity um, allies. Well, they're not listed as allies. They are allies, though. They're not in the party list, I guess. Um, what is funny is that the enemies spawn, and some of them might have skills that summon spirits. And so when they spawn during the dialogue, these will they will be allied to you so you can't attack them. It's just a kind of cutscene thing I guess. But once you're um, once you're done with the dialogue they will become hostile but if they've summoned any spirits those will actually not be hostile. They don't turn hostile with them and the, the game just triggers all the all the NPCs themselves to become hostile not uh, not something they've summoned. So you, you'll see possibly in later uh, well in a bit um, that there's some some friendly spirits still around, which uh, yeah were cast by the enemies before they became enemies. Aside from that, these groups aren't all one big group; they're not all linked, so you can um, quite easily deal with them one by one. I guess play carefully and pull them if you're if you're struggling with the enemies so far, and then you just just make your way in here and um, 
yeah, just deal with the boss. That really is all there is to to this. So, yeah, I'm just dealing with the stragglers here, not much need for that. So, I guess, um, I hope you found this somewhat useful. And when you do this, you might be a little more careful at that one spot where I died. But yeah, that's it. Bye-bye.